you very much, uh, Director of Ceremonies. It's good to be here to see a lot of friends that we've worked with for 27 years. <laughs> and the 27 years, I've done three tours on the kind of business Tanganyan member that I have done. I've done four tours on this side of, of, of the market. So in other words, I've been a media practitioner. I've also been a spokesperson. So I, I wanted to say that in order to contextualize what I'm going to say, so that uh, I, there's no ambiguity about what I mean or what I intended to mean. Now, I'll say something about the MB later. And now, as far as them allows, maybe I will have a chance of uh, uh, speaking to some of the issues that they already had uh, spoken about. But only to make clarity in terms of where we stand with regards to that. Namibia continues to be uh, uh, to lead the World Press uh, Media, <laughs> World Press Ranking ahead of many developed countries in the world. This ranking says something about us as a country and its governance architecture. It didn't fall from something. I think it was a deliberate effort to show that the Namibia is where it is now. The government, of course, jealously cut this achievement and we didn't take it for granted because we know that uh, the media operators, government, civil society, we work together to make this happen. And no one individual organization or person should be able to take credit for this. So this is an achievement for, for the Namibian people. To aid the work of media, uh, government, uh, sorry, parliament passed the Access to Information Bill. The bill aims to uh, promote public access to information from private, from a public institutions, but also private institutions. I think you guys who do comment, you missed this point. This uh, bill also covers private institutions. Now, a bill, when it becomes law, it will, of course, make it easy for the media operators to get information that is in our position. And I must mention here that uh, the law makes exceptions to the kind of information that, that is privileged. And this is important to mention the fact that uh, we, our expectation, therefore, is that we're not going to have documents stolen when the law is actually there. Come through the front door, ask for what you need. If it's not privileged information, it shall be given to you. Whether it's the Minister of Information or the Namibian Breweries, this can also go and ask for information from the Breweries. If that's what, if it's uh, your request. Now, in the next couple of days, maybe tomorrow, the government will make a statement in terms of explaining its government communication strategy going forward. We want to make it easy for the media operators to contact us and then we shall tell relevant persons to speak on the subjects which they are, they are being asked for. The profession faces unprecedented economic and economic challenges. This Firstly, the disruption of traditional business models that I can make reference to. The rapid changes in how people consume news. Growing competition from the alternative media. A proliferation of disinformation and misinformation resulting in the erosion of public trust in news sources and the mind accurate and impartial journalism. Profits have replaced skills and experience in the newsroom. Law salaries have led to demoralized workforce and, and it resulted in high turnover. The result is that stories are single sourced or in some cases completely uh, anonymously sourced. The biggest casualty in this case will be the consumer. The media play a very important role in telling what 
there are many unit, there are many stories of people of uniting people by building mutual respect and truth. The media and government are not enemies. The government needs the media to report on its agenda so that the citizens are better informed. In any, in any event, the government will always be the biggest newsmaker in the country because of the role that government plays in society. For, for this, I wish to say that we can learn a lot about the Western media. Fox News and CNN, BBC and Sky News are op on opposite ends for the political ideology. But they agree one thing, and that is Russia is their enemy. Now, that's whether it's right or wrong, we can debate about it, but they agree that they have one common enemy, and that's Russia. At the center of the media's support should be developed. Parts of the country remain underreported in the mainstream, uh, mainstream media. And I think the colleagues have gone to extend to explain why that is the case. The voices of the masses remain unheard. Most of the time, whether you're on television or radio or reading news of that, you see exactly the same sources of information are quoted. The same political analysts are quoted. The same economists are quoted. The same gender activists are quoted. But generally, those of us who are not known by the media editors, their voices largely remain unheard. Now, at the present moment, uh, let me make a point first to say that uh, government supports the plurality of <coughs> the media uh, industry. To give an example, there are 18 private radio, uh, commercial radio stations and two <coughs> community radio stations, seven TV channels, 10 public radio stations, about 11 newspapers. That's how plural media is in Namibia. Now, because of that uh, plurality, the media offers the best chance to introduce issues that are salient in the rural communities so that government understands what is happening in the most rural uh, places, but also the most rural places to understand what is happening where decisions are being made and how decisions actually are being made. Obviously, it's not easy to have the beliefs in every part of the country. Namibia is one of the biggest countries on the planet. For any of these colleagues here to have a burial in, in, in Tsumbe, to expect them to have a burial in Tsumbe, in any part of the country, will perhaps miss the point. And that's not the expectation. Government accepts the fact that. Uh, Editors, journalists, they have the prerogative of opinion. But government too is led by people who too have opinions about what the media says. So that should not result in some kind of antagonism to say if government disagrees what the media says, therefore government seems to be uh, sensitive to criticism. So we should be given opportunity to be able to explain things rationally. And if we're not doing that, I think the media is there to hold us accountable. Let me say something about uh, uh, the report that we are launching today. It contains very interesting observations. It also contains factual errors that are hard to ignore. For one, it refers to the Ministry of Marginalized Communities. 
the, the danger here is that we put things in writing, and someone is going to read this document. They're going to assume, because it's written down by very opinionated people, this is correct. I want to give you another example. It also refers to remarks, remarks made by uh, the founding president in 2000 about lesbian and, and all of those things. That was 2000, end of 2000. It's reflected in this report 21 years later. What does that say about the quality of producing quality information? And that must be believed by the people that read it. Now, let me give you what is one more. It also says, it refers to the National Assembly as a law of the House of, of Pan. I don't know where that impression comes from. As a matter of fact, just so that you know, anything starts with the National Assembly and it ends there. A bill starts there, goes to National Council, comes next to the National Assembly uh, for it to become law. The National Assembly can actually dissolve the National Council, but the National Council cannot dissolve uh, the National Assembly. I, I have written this, I think it knows it very well. I have written a lot about this subject. Uh, Frederico should also know about this. Sorry, uh, you wrote part of this, just mentioning that you know this because I've written about this. I've done an entire PhD thesis on the constitution making of Namibia. So we can have a debate about this and whether people should be accepted at this and have faith in the work of a media practitioner. I don't know how to conclude this speech because I didn't write it. So I'm just going to sit down. Thank you.